Are you looking to invest in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, or Litecoin? GV Computers, a trusted name in computer and cybersecurity, can help you buy or sell cryptocurrency easily and safely. Contact them by phone at 888-844-7806. If you are just getting your feet wet in Bitcoin, the friendly staff at GV will be happy to answer all your questions. Good evening. I'm still reporting on Bitcoin. Now, I'm the worst person imaginable from whom to take investment advice unless you understand that my record on investment advice is nearly perfect. Perfectly wrong. You see, I have this theory that God's hand is on me and He knows that if I were to make a ton of money just manipulating numbers, then I would probably not be doing the job that I am doing right now. So, thanks to you all, He's giving me enough money to live, but not enough to go off and get indulgent and lazy. So with that stipulated, I'll proceed. I admit that I was not a fan of Bitcoin all along, but I was wrong. Now the only remaining problem for us newbies is how to get in and out of Bitcoin, how to buy Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency with your U.S. dollars. The forces of big banking make this as hard as possible. But now a genius guy who is one of my advertisers and now a friend named Parag has cracked the code. He's the guy who owns GV Computer. Get to know him before he gets too big. Eventually, he's going to be known as the first Bitcoin bank of Parag, and he'll be too busy to take your call. But for right now, you can still talk to him. So, Bitcoin had a huge run-up a month ago as Japan made it legal and the Koreans, fearing war with the North, figured out they could protect their savings this way. It ran up to almost $3,000 per Bitcoin, but since then has traded in a range between 2300 and 2700 currently trading at 2563 But because of the finite number of Bitcoins, it is absolutely for sure over the long run to go up and up in value. People all over the world can buy, own, and transact in Bitcoin now. There are 7.3 billion people on the planet, so if all 21 million Bitcoins were distributed evenly to every person on the planet, each person would have only 0.00287 of one Bitcoin. Another way of stating that math is that only one person out of every 347.6 people can possibly ever own a whole Bitcoin. Once you figure this out, you've got the essentials. Why would I take payment in dollars? If I was smart, I'd only take payment in Bitcoin and then only keep a few dollars on hand to do business with those who still only take dollars. However, the Bitcoins I have in my crypto wallet are sure to be an appreciating asset, while the dollar is for sure a depreciating asset. Bitcoin is now getting so big that it has started acting like a regular stock and has, in the last three days, tested a $2,300 bottom twice and bounced back. What that means, from a technical perspective, is that when people see Bitcoin trading at below $2,300, they figure it's a bargain, and so enough jump in to send it back up. But enough of me on Bitcoin. I have a good friend, Nathan, whose blog is called Nathan's Economic Edge, who wrote a lengthy piece I want to recommend to you. Its title is The Math of Bitcoin and Why It Is Not Yet in a Bubble. Here is an excerpt from Nathan's piece on the Bitcoin non-bubble. The main argument of those who proclaim it to be in a bubble is that the people buying it at these prices are not buying it for its original purpose, which they believe to be enabling transactions. Yes, it is being used for transactions. More than 100,000 businesses now take Bitcoin for transactions. But instead, naysayers believe that others are buying it as an investment and thus will surely be burned. For me, and I believe most to understand what is happening, we are not buying it for either of those reasons. We own it because we see it acting as a store of value where nothing else priced in dollars is. 
With interest rates artificially low, manipulated by central banks, a normal person cannot earn even near the pace of actual inflation with any type of traditional savings account. Bonds are artificially in a bubble, stocks are artificially in a bubble, real estate is in yet another bubble. Everywhere one who understands bubble dynamics looks, they see a bubble, but not Bitcoin. People are trading in their worthless and less dollars for them. The bubble is the dollar. The world's reserve and petrodollar is being drowned by central banks all over the globe, not just our own Fed. And thus, there is no store of value to be found. This is a terribly ugly situation for people who believe in hard work and saving to get ahead to someday retire comfortably. Retirees on fixed income simply cannot and will not be able to keep up as the impossible math of dollar debt continues on its vertical ascent. We would love to love gold and silver, but those too are manipulated by central banks who own the majority of it. They manipulate and derivative the markets to artificially keep devaluation of the dollar hidden. Control of the dollar is centralized with the banks. That's why we refer to them as central banks. All the power and control resides with them as private individuals were wrongly and illegally given the power to coin money with the Federal Reserve Act in 1913. What makes Bitcoin a better store of value? It is decentralized. This is huge. It means that it is not under the control of central banks and thus cannot be manipulated directly by them. This is the most important aspect. It is a game changer as it changes the who is behind it, something that gold and silver do not do because central banks have printed money to buy the majority of it. Caution. Central banks may be able to indirectly manipulate blockchain currencies in the future if they create ETFs and other derivatives based upon them. This, however, will not change the underlying store of value. And when it happens, I would encourage you not to own the derivative, but to instead buy Bitcoin directly, again, because it's not in control of the central banks. It is decentralized versus their centralized everything, which makes them vulnerable. Yes, central banks can print dollars and use them to buy Bitcoin, but that will only drive the price up and cause others to enter as well. In the end, they cannot manipulate what they can't control. In the end, they cannot manipulate what they don't control. Even if central banks were to ban exchanges in one country, all one will have to do is join an exchange overseas. This has the central banks trumped. It cannot be stopped. I'll stop right there. To view the rest of Nathan's piece, go to the link published below at the top of the description box. I'm still reporting from Washington. Good day.